can't figure this out. I said, honey, what is you doing calling me from area code 205? I got a track phone. You get any area code on it you want. I said, so what is it, baby? I was just calling back. We getting close. I was just wondering if you was going to make it. I said, baby, I, I can't make it. I'm, I'm working that weekend. You don't even know when it is. I said, but I'm working every weekend, though. I know, I saw it on the internet. You busy, you just on tour everywhere. Congratulations, Uncle Steve, you doing real good. I said, thank you, baby. Well, is you gonna come? I said, baby, I'm working every weekend. You just saw it on the internet, I ain't gonna be able to make it. It's on a Wednesday. <laughs> Who you know? Getting married on a damn Wednesday. You already know this finna be some ghetto mess right here. I'm told, so now I said, baby, look, I ain't gonna make it. I, I, I just can't do it. I'm working somewhere. Listen, baby, I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you a, a vacation. You ain't never been outside of Cleveland. She ain't been nowhere. She ain't never been to Akron. Ain't been to Canton, Toledo. She ain't been outside the city of Cleveland. I said, I'm gonna give you a vacation. You and little Ricky. I'm going to send y'all to Hawaii for seven days. Oh, Uncle Steve. Ooh. Are we going to have to catch an airplane? <laughs> Who don't know this? I said, yeah, baby, you're going to have to catch it. I ain't never been on a plane before. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, Uncle Steve, I got a problem, though. I need a babysitter. <laughs> and then she paused, like I'm finna raise my hand for this here. Ain't no way in hell I'm watching your kids. See, when you got five kids, you don't need a babysitter. For the week you gone, you need to put them kids in foster care. <laughs> you got, we got five kids, you got to get their ass placed. You got to put two over there, one cross down, one down. There ain't nobody finna watch five kids. So I said, baby, look, I ain't, I, that's all I'm going to be able to do. And I, okay, well, I sure wish you wanted you to come. It would mean a lot to me. I said, okay, well, all right, holla at you, click. I get off the phone, my wife there. My wife's beautiful, but pleasant personality. I've never been this happy in my life. I never have known this. I'm telling you. She is the most beautiful thing ever happened to me. But she just, you know, she too damn nice. So I got off the phone. She said, so are you going to go to the wedding? I said, baby, I'm not going to the wedding. She said, Steve, I really think you should go to the wedding. I said, I think you need to shut the fuck up. Because you don't know my family. This ain't no time for you to try to be a good Christian. Let it go. Let's just keep moving on. I think, really think we should go. Look, your family looks up to you. And you need to be there for them more. And we are going to go to this wedding. Because I would be highly disappointed in you if you do not go to your niece's wedding. So I'm weighing it out. Do I really care that she's highly disappointed in me? Because right now, I really don't give a damn. I'm going to buy you a purse and some shoes, and we're going to move on past this right here. Hell, I'll get you a car. But why has we got to go to Cleveland, though? So I looked at her. I said, okay, all right, we going. When we get there, don't say nothing. We're going to go to the wedding. So we go to the wedding. It was everything I thought it was gonna be. This ghetto raggedy ass wedding. Listen to me, poor people ain't got no business having weddings with receptions. You ain't got no money for no reception now. She done made bologna sandwiches and cut them up each sandwich into 32s and the stuck toothpicks down in each one of them. 32s! We got to walk around the table eight times to make a damn sandwich. This 
this raggedy ass wedding. I ain't even gonna tell it to you in order. I'm just gonna tell you what happened at the wedding. Cause to put it in order don't make no damn sense. First of all, they have 24 people in the wedding. <laughs> Who you know really got 12 damn friends? 12 grooms and 12 brides. The colors they chose was chocolate brown and mint green. Ain't none of the women went to the same store. You know how many shades of green it is. Them heifers were standing up there look like a bag of Skittles. It was mint green, lime green, money green, emerald green, yellow green, her green, grass green. I said, Lord have mercy. And two of her girlfriends is dancers. Oh, no, 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 no. Not Alvin Ailey dancers. I'm talking about, that. come on, this damn pole, pole. Stripper, uh, wrap your leg, round it, let's go. Now these two heifers, one of them got a tattoo of a snake going up her leg and it wraps around her thigh and the, and the snake is biting at that thing. Now they done modified they gown, they done told a split all the way up the hill. That's how I know the snake head is biting at it. Now they coming up the aisle just advertising. <laughs> now my uncle Thido, he standing there got his hands in his pocket. Yeah, look at him. Oh, work that thing. Shake that monkey. Go on, girl. Shake that monkey at me. Shake your monkey. Shake it, shake it. We in church. My Aunt Agnes said, Oh, no, you ain't looking at them hoes. You black son of a bitch. In the church. Now, my little bougie wife, Steve, they cussing in the church. I told you, don't say nothing. See, you want to come here? I said, don't say a damn thing when we get here. You're the only one upset about the cussing at the church. This is what they do. Everybody used to this in here. You don't see nobody else saying nothing. Just shut your ass up. We at the wedding. You want to come? Now nah, we here. <laughs> now I'm going to tell you something else that happened. This ain't in order. It don't make no damn sense. My niece has always had a dream to have on her wedding day a horse and carriage. <laughs> Look, when you ain't got money, it's some things you need to start checking off your list. <laughs> you ain't got the money for all this here. Now, uh, you thinking white horse, white carriage. Here her and Ricky come around the corner. They done borrowed the man wagon that sell watermelons in the hood. Got a dip in his back, got hay all on the back of this bug boy, got some watermelons on it. She just coming around the corner just as proud. She get down off of the bug board, they throwing the rice on her before the wedding. Here come my wife, they not supposed to do that. I told you to shut your ass up. I, I, they ain't supposed to do none of this. We ain't supposed to be here. But your little bougie ass wanted to come. Now you get the rice and throw it. Now she gone in the church. She in the church. They walking her in. I get ready to go in the church. And I notice little Ricky is still on the buckboard. And he crying. <laughs> He rubbing his leg. I go to the bug boy, I said, Ricky, why don't you come on, man? You finna have a way. My leg, my leg. I said, what's wrong with your leg? I'm under house arrest. He got an ankle bracelet on and his stupid ass done rolled too far from the house. Now it's just staying in his hand. 
Boy, get your stupid ass down off that buckboard and walk up to the front of the church. Maybe it'll stop hurting so much. We get in the church. Oh, it get worse. These two fools then decided that they gonna write their own vows. They get in Mike's little stupid ass thug. Yeah, yeah, Mike check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, 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 yeah. Yeah, little Rick up in here. I just want to say you know that I'll be there for you forever. You know, through the thick and the thin, you understand? I take care of you and everybody up in here because I'm, I'm hard like that, you know what I'm saying? I promise to be with you forever. You know, rich and for Poe, but, but you know, to hell with that Poe though. You know, Rick go out here and make it happen. I do whatever I got to do. I got to go back to prison for you and the kids. I go back. My wife, I'm ready to go. We got to get out of here. You can't do this in the Lord's house. We ain't going no damn way. I told you we shouldn't even have come to this crazy ass wedding. Yeah, now you all said you won't be a Christian. You shut up and listen to this wedding. So she was so distraught. Steve, this ain't right. This just ain't. I said, okay, cool. Let's go then. Because she was just too upset. But I told her, you know what I mean? So we walking out the church. And we get almost to the door. And I hear the man say, and now... We are going outside for the releasing of the doves. Bring your ass on, come on. Cause ain't nowhere in the hell I'm finna miss this. I know good and hell well you ain't got no money for no doves. You know how much white doves cost? Y'all, I went outside, I was the first one at the cage. I'm standing there, cause they finna be good. My wife, we have to go. We ain't going no damn well. That old man came out and opened up that cage. All kinds of birds flew out of there. It wasn't a white dove in there nowhere. Pigeons came out. Black crows came out. They had a squirrel in there running the birds out. Two chickens was in the cage. And one bird came out like this. <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all something else too. We got some serious business we got to take care of. For the first time ever in the history of this country, an African-American man is running for the presidency of the United States. And by the time this DVD come out, election will be over with. But since y'all in here, let me tell you something. We got business to take care of. We have an obligation here. We got a duty to fulfill. This ain't nothing about no choices no more. This is not a choice. This is something that we have to make happen. If it's in God's plans, we have to do our part. See, a lot of times God presents you with a blessing and an opportunity, but if you don't act on it, it'll just go away. And if you don't go down there and do what you got to do as a voter, an opportunity go away. It don't mean it wasn't meant to be. It means you missed the opportunity. Well, if the Lord had a wanted, no. If you'd have took your ignorant ass down there and voted like he told you to. See, faith without works is dead. You got to go put some work in. You got to get this man in the office. This is crazy right here, man. I never thought in my lifetime that I would live to see this happen. Now that it's right out here, you better know I'm going down there. You better know I'm going down there. You're damn right I'm voting for him. I had never had no intentions of voting for Hillary. Oh, I put her on the show because you got to be bipartisan when you're a radio show host. But the whole time she was talking, I was saying to myself, I'm not voting for your ass. I'm voting for Barack Obama. Period. I like her too. I think she's a nice lady. I think she make do a good job. But that ain't my damn fault. That ain't my job though. She won't be president here. You was in the White House. Your husband been president. That's good enough. You can't go twice. Damn it, I just thought of a new rule. You just can't go twice. 
sitting up in here, man. You people kill me with they. I don't know if he going. People kill me with this here. I was sitting on the plane talking to this white guy. Real cool dude, man. We had a good time. We was on the plane, man. Really, really, really good dude, man. I could tell his spirit was right. We was flying on the plane from New York to L.A. We was talking, and we, the conversation went on a couple of hours, man. Interesting guy. He said, Steve, I ask you a question. Are you going to vote in this election? I said, yeah, man. It's pretty important. He said, I, I, you don't have to answer this, but I'm just curious. You mind sharing with me who you might vote for? I said, yeah, yeah. I'm going to vote for Barack Obama. He said, why are you... Answered that right. He said, you've made a decision already? I said, yeah. He said, well, let me ask you something. And I, I don't want to throw you off. At, you know, are you voting for Barack Obama simply because he's African-American? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's what the hell I'm going to do. Yeah. 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 That's the reason I'm doing it. I ain't. can't think of nothing else I need to tell you. I'm voting for the man just cause he black. Yep. Gonna walk in that ching ching. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. You know? He said, Steve, I, you know, you seem like a really honest guy. Doesn't that seem to you like reverse racism in a way that you would vote for a person simply because he's black? I said, well, let me ask you something about racism, period. Is the reason that I'm voting for him? Is that the same reason that you ain't gonna vote for him? Okay. Boy, he turned his head and started looking out the window. He ain't speak to me the rest of the flight. And I was looking right upside his head too. The whole damn flight, three hours left. Turn around, say something else to me. Turn around, I, I swear to God, I'm gonna be right here. To See, people kill me with that reverse racism and Fox News, all they doing is dogging Obama, trying to make him into a, a hateful person and all this here. I got news for y'all. I don't give a damn what you say. You know, he ain't got experience. Hell, McCain ain't never been president before. Now, I'm not voting for his old ass. I'm just going to tell you I'm age discriminating. He's too damn old. I don't think he going to make it. I'm not voting for nobody. I ain't got a good four years left. He don't look like he gonna make it. Old ass man sitting up here, last name McCain. I think he's Lucas McCain, the rifle man's granddaddy. Old ass, I've been looking at his neck. You seen his neck, it don't look healthy. Yeah, how you a man, your neck look just like Barbara Walter neck. I told you this wasn't a radio show, didn't I tell you? That I swear this is what I be wanting to say, <laughs> man. And I'm pulling the, I, I, I want some change, man. It's time for a change. This is going crazy right here. If you are willing to vote for four more years of the way it's been going, something is wrong with you. Are you crazy? All these people houses getting foreclosed on. Oh, see, you know what the problem is now? Ain't just black people houses getting foreclosed on. Everybody house getting foreclosed on now. That's why they voting for Obama. Everybody voting for Obama, black and white. Sitting up in here, man, with this crazy mess. Gas, $5 a damn gallon. Ain't that crazy? You know it's crazy. I be watching y'all at the pump. Y'all don't even pump gas the same no more. Remember when you used to go to the pump and put the nozzle in there and Put that little click thing down. Be looking around, speaking to people, what's happening? <laughs> My man, what's happening? <laughs> hey! Hey, oh, this boy, ain't nothing going on with it. <laughs> you be out there cleaning your windshield, you be... <laughs> yeah, man, ain't nothing going on. Yeah, there ain't nothing going on but the rent. <laughs> <laughs> we late. Bring me a cooler when you come up out of that pack of cools. Cooler and a pack of cools. Ain't none of that happening at the pump no more. Your ass ain't talking to nobody. You looking at that damn meter. Come on now. Come on, come on now. Come on, give me some more, give me some more, come on. Come on, I ain't, I ain't putting but 30 in there. Come on now, oh, 30. 30-01. God! Damn it. 
Lord, I done went past 30. Lord, Jesus. You get in your car and turn that car on and be looking at that needle, $30, fourth of a tank. We got to get some changes up in here, man. This ain't right no more. I want to get back to when pumping gas was fun. Remember, you get $2 worth of gas. Remember that? I'm going to go on in here and get $2 worth of gas. You could buy some snacks. When last time you went there and bought a snack? And pay for this gas and get your ass in that car. Eat that apple you've been eating on since 4 o'clock. <laughs> and then this war. So I'm sick of this war, too. We need to kill this war. George Bush with his lying ass. Lying ass make me sick. We in this funky ass war and he's supporting the war. George Bush killed me. He's supporting the war. I'm proud of our troops. Well, I'm proud of the troops too, but I ain't proud of the war we in. Sitting up in here with your lying ass, I support the war. We should be proud of our young servicemen for giving their lives. Yeah, we should be proud of them. But since you believe in the war so much, all our kids got to go over there. All these po' blacks, po' whites, and po' Latinos over there fighting the war. You really think our kids want to be over there? Why don't you send your kids over there? How about them two drunk-ass daughters of yours that ain't doing nothing but drinking in college? You send their ass over there since you believe in the war. Don't start this unjust war. We in a war because we over there to find weapons of mass destruction. What weapons? We done been over there three, four years. We ain't found a firecracker. <laughs> Hell, we found Saddam Hussein in a hole. His ass ain't even have a gun. <laughs> Sitting up in there, got us over this here. Now he, now he having trouble filling up the armed forces. And see, I tell all the troops, man, listen to me. When I meet them and they say, Steve, pray for me, man. I'm getting deployed, man. I'm, I'm going back, man. I say, hey, man, I tell all the troops the same thing. Because I support the troops a thousand percent. I tell everybody I meet over there. I tell them one thing. Do whatever you got to do to come back home. To hell with the Geneva Convention. The hell with all them hostage laws, POW can't do whatever you got to do to come back home. Because I'm telling you right now, they talking about implementing the draft and upping the age. Tell you what, stay away from my age group. Because you start taking some grown ass men over there, the damn war ain't going to go like you think. Because we don't just be doing what you tell us to do. Come on, we're going man fuck you and that hill I ain't going no damn well I'm be at the house you and that hill can kiss my ass man, they blowing shit up over there I saw them last week two people ain't come back I ain't going no damn well you talking about you gonna up the draft I'm telling you what, you know, don't, don't ask Steve to go over there cause if you get me over there the wall gonna be different if you get me off the plane on Tuesday you gonna have me back on the plane by Friday Cause I'm shooting everybody soon as I see your ass. If you ain't got an American uniform on, your ass in trouble. Cause damn it, I don't know who you is walking up on me, blowing me up. Oh no, you ain't. Soon as I get off the plane, I'm opening fire. Cow, 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 oh, shit. cow, cow, pow. What you looking at? Pop, pop. You looking? I saw you looking. Don't come up to me talking about I'm an Iranian soldier. Pow, 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 pow. No. I don't give a damn. Don't walk up on me with none of them robes on they be wearing. That little tile on your head. I don't give a damn. Cow, 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 cow. Backpack. Thought he had a bomb. Pow, pow, pow. I'm sorry. Man, I, I thought he had a bomb. All them women over there shooting women too. Don't make me no damn different. Had a little mask on. Talking about. La, 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 la. Oh, I thought she said, look out. I, I'm sorry. I thought she said, look out. Look out. Look out. Look out. Look out. Oh, I thought she said, babies, I don't give a damn. I'm sorry. Don't walk up on me. I'm touchy. I'm very touchy. Don't be pulling on my uniform. Mr. Mr. Pow Pow. Oh, God. I done shot the baby. Lord, him father. Lord, forgive. Oh, Steven shot the baby. Send me home. Pow Pow Pow. Steve, what's wrong? I'm out of ammo. 
Need some more ammo? Steve, be careful. There's landmines everywhere. Okay? I better not step on a stick. Be walking. That's a twig. Oh, man, I thought it was a landmine. Yeah. I don't take everybody with me. I ain't, I ain't pulling up. Right now. <laughs> you know, uh, this is one of the first markets we was on when we started the radio show a long time ago. We uh, went to Africa one time. And uh, if you've never been to Africa, I tell everybody, save your money and go. It's a spiritual trip. When you get off the plane, it's an amazing feeling. Because you immediately, immediately feel at home. You may have never been there before, but when you step off the plane, where the origin of mankind started, that's Africa. Don't let nobody fool you. It all jumped off in Africa. The oldest fossils, bones they find, they in Africa, Egypt, all through there. That, that's, that's where we're from. People went off, got different skin tones and stuff. Uh, it's, all, it's, it's all just the truth. When you go there, you're going back home. My nephew, Tommy. Uh, who I love dearly, but is not the brightest person I've ever spent time with. <laughs> he did something really heavy a couple of, Sometimes Tommy stuns me with how deep he can be sometimes. He wrote a tip while we was in Africa and his tip was, we are going back to a place called home to which we've never been. That's amazing. To go back home but never been there though. That's what it's like. Because you immediately connect your spirit, your ancestors, all that is, is there. It's an amazing truth. Save your money and go. It's, it costs a little money. Now, when you go, they're going to send you some information depending on where you stay. We stayed at this place called the Zimbali Lodge. They send you a letter before you come. Three very important things I got out the letter. See, when I read a letter, it, I am the code cracker. I read a letter different. Three things in the letter. First of all, it says, when visiting our beautiful country, please take all of the necessary shots and medicines to enjoy a full stay while in Africa. <laughs> enjoy your visit and have a most wonderful time. Now, when you read that like that, it means, carry your ass to your doctor and take all the shots they got and every pill they give you. Because when you get over there, they have stuff for you that you are not able to deal with. They got insects over there that when they bite you, your ass die. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I, I saw a dude get bit and a knot came up on the back of his ear. He could look at it. He looked at it. And then he died. The African said, he must not have taken the necessary shots. <laughs> and they got bugs over there, man, in Africa you've never seen. I was standing at the bus stop. We went to downtown Durban. And we were downtown, and I was standing there with the guy. I didn't know his name. I just kept calling him Buwana. And uh, I said, say, Buwana, on that bus stop across the street, what is that big thing on the bus stop? He said, it is a mosquito. No, 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 dog, 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 listen to me. I said on the side of the bus stop, that big thing that's on the side of it, what is that? That is a mosquito. <laughs> then the mosquito took off and flew across the street. <laughs> he said, that is why you have to take your shots. I said, hell, you need some weights in your pocket too. 
thing, pick you up and carry your ass somewhere. They have all of this stuff. The next thing that it says is, when coming to the Zimbali Lodge, please do not bring any household pets as we have all the wildlife you need for your enjoyment while you are here. Please enjoy your stay in beautiful Africa. That simply means don't bring your damn dogs or your cats over here. Cause see, when you go to the jungle, everything over there, in order to eat, they have to kill something. Ain't nobody out there setting out no bowls of milk out there or nothing. Here kitty, kitty, kitty. Here kitty, kitty, kitty. Now you ain't gotta set nothing out. They see what they want, they go tear it apart and they eat it. So don't bring your dogs. Third thing it says, very important. When walking with a partner at night, stay on the lighted pathways at all times. Please enjoy your stay at the Zimbali Lodge and have a most enjoyable time. See, when walking at night with a partner, cold, don't have your ass out here in the dark by your damn self. That is critical information. All of this is important. Now you got the letter. Here's the story of what happened. We get on the plane. Me and my wife sitting there. Here comes a white lady. She get on the plane, and what does she have on her arm but that little bag with the damn dog in it? I saw her. I said, hey, baby, where's she going with the dog? The letter said, don't bring no damn dogs over here. She said, Steve, you ain't got nothing to do with that. Oh, wait a minute, hold, quit telling me what I ain't got nothing to do. At dinner, dinner, her, Woo! They say, see right there? I don't want to hear this for 17 hours. Sitting up here flying with this punk ass dog, and Woo! all this barking and stuff right here. That's probably why they ain't want him on the damn plane. Woo! See, look at this snap. I'm going to snap his neck in the middle of the night. I'm going to get him to go to the bathroom and stomp the bag. I'm going to knock his ass out because I, I ain't going to be hearing this all night long. I'm thinking this, Steve, Steve, that ain't your business. Let it go. I said, okay, it better not be my business then. So we get over to Africa. We land in Johannesburg before we go to Durban. Now what I don't know is the Steve Harvey show is shown in syndication in Africa. I never even knew this. Everybody, when I got off the plane, knew who I was. Yeah, but see, Africans be a little bit more exuberant when they see you. So you know, I got off the plane, they was like, Steve Harvey, and I'm standing on the plane and I'm going, okay, hey, <laughs> I don't know what the hell they saying, but I know when I hear Steve Harvey, Steve Harvey. So I get on and I'm going, hey, black people, what's happening? And I'm touching them, high-fiving and stuff. But they don't just do that. They want to pick you up. I don't like being picked up. I'm... So they pick me up and, they, and I'm on their shoulders and they carry me. And I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> Shit. Because my ass was on one of them's shoulder. But the other African was littler. He wasn't as tall. So my ass wasn't on nothing. So it was making my ass open up. And I was very uncomfortable because it was wind blowing through there and it felt like a peppermint patty was in my ass. I don't like when drafts get in there. And he was lobbing. I said, you better be careful. And he was just jumping. So I tried to push the little one's head up under my ass to even it out. Come on, reach your head on the hip. That's better. Okay, now, now that's better. I, I can do this. I can do. So they put me down and we get on the flight and we finish the trip. We go to Durban. When I get to the Zimbali Lodge, incredible place. It's on a conservatory, meaning that it's set in a jungle. And you, it's just the jungle. 
Ain't no fences, no gates, nothing. Okay, now, this really a little bit too much Africa for me. I, you know, I wanted to go to the bush. I ain't want to li- I ain't want to wake up in it already. I just want to drive out there, see it, go back, nice downtown hotel, get some room service. This, this is I'm very uncomfortable. So when I get to the lodge, they all say, "We are welcome you to the Zimbabwe lodge. You are most welcome. You are the king. We will treat you like the king of comedy that you are." And we are going to put you in a special place for the only king stay. I mean, they was treating me that, but you know, Africans, they real cool when they be talking to you. You are going to have the time of your life. Enjoy. <laughs> so my wife, as soon as we get there, she go to the gift shop. I don't know what it is about y'all. Y'all just want to just go buy shit. What? The- <laughs> I figure gift shop can't do too much damage in there by a couple of elephants and stuff. So I told dude, take me down to the lodge so I can set it up. You are not going to wait on the wife? I said, hey man, we going to Africa for the first time. I got to go get set up down here. Because we're going to break the, you know, going to break the cottage in. First time in Africa, loving. We, we finna do some jungle. I got to go set up for some jungle love down here. I'm finna have some wild stuff going on in here. You know, I got to get baby all up on the walls and everything. I get to, you know, we're going to be sliding on the walls on baby. I'm wild when I'm in there. You know, I'm in Africa. Let's do something we ain't never done before. You know, let's get some banana peels and throw it in the water. Stuff like that. I'm, I'm going to go down here and get it set up real sexy. So when she come down here, we just going to get started. Oh, you are, you are a player. Okay, anything you want to do, just, just leave the bag. So he left the bags. That's, it's, it's nighttime. He leave the bags, and he go on about his business. So I take the key, and uh, I'll try to open the door. I got a car key, and door don't open. So I'm trying to check it out. Uh-oh. So I start looking around windows and stuff, and it ain't opening. And I'm getting a little concerned. I, and then I look around, and I realize... Just how dark it get in Africa. <laughs> See, this ain't no regular nighttime. When, when it's dark in Africa, it don't be night. It be, it be blue black. It, it be damn near burgundy out there. It's damn near burgundy. You ain't never seen no night like this. And I turn around, I said, man, it's dark as hell out here. And then you start hearing the jungle sounds that you ain't ever... <laughs> Okay, now I need the door to open right now, because damn it, we got a problem. I'm hearing these noises, but the door ain't open. I start playing with myself, because when I get nervous, I twirl it around a lot, and I was twirling on it. And then I, so then I pushed it up in there, because I was thinking to myself, it probably don't need to be outside for this here, because in case somebody try to snatch me, I don't want it to get towed. So I pushed it up in there and I was looking like my sister then. I thought I had a vagina because I was so scared. I just, I went, oh God, please don't let nothing happen to big fella, not out here. And so I'm sitting there and then I said, okay, go up to the lodge and get another key. And then I remembered the letter. When walking at night with a partner, Stay on the lighted pathway. I went, oh hell, I'm by my damn self. <laughs> now I'm looking and what they don't tell you about the lighted pathway is it's only lit every 40 yards. So it's a street light, pitch black. Street light, pitch black. Oh Lord Jesus. <laughs> so I'm standing in this light spot. If you'd have seen my old ass, trying to get to this other spot of light because that dog was wearing my echo I was up here boy I said all right come on now (laughs) now I can't breathe my mouth open And then I'm standing in this spot and I think it was a monkey. 
a monkey went swinging by on the vine and his tail rubbed me across my lips. Now I'm scared to death and I'm still and then I, I'm standing there I'm trying to pull myself together because I think it was a monkey but I wasn't sure and then all of a sudden another monkey came up behind me and took his little monkey hand and just stuck it dead in my ass and he pulled it out and ran light for our son. I said, oh God, oh the monkeys, oh the monkeys is the monkeys is finna rape me. Oh God, oh the monkeys is violating me. I'm getting violated by the monkeys, Jesus. Jesus, I can't take it home. Don't let it happen before. None of the monkeys. Oh my God, what is it? Really? I'm, doing, I'm really toiling it bad now. I got it in a knot. I don't even know what's wrong. It's just in a knot now. So I finally make it up to the lodge. Y'all, it look like I've been through hell. I get up at that lodge, my mouth. And here come his cool ass. Mr. Harvey, what seems to be the problem? You know what you got? Damn problem is, you son of a bitch. It's the, the, the monkeys is the problem. You know they out there. Mr. Harvey, is there anything that we can do? You ain't put some more lights out there. It ain't enough damn lights and you know it, you black bastard. So he said, you, I take it you do not have your key. You damn right I ain't got my key. Now you go in there and find my wife and get eight or nine of y'all and come on walk me back down here. And I want everybody too, all this African service. Get everybody and walk my ass back down here. So I'm about to walk down there and I look over at the desk and I see somebody yelling at one of the brothers at the desk. <gasps> And I look up, and I see the white lady. And the bag is on the floor, and ain't no dog in it. I pull myself together, because God must have wanted me to go through this for a reason. And I immediately walked over there to see how I could help. And boy, she was going up. You've got, my, you've got to do something. You've got to find my dog. Now, Africans, when they, when you tripping, they get cooler. You say there is a problem with your dog. Damn it! You heard me. I said my dog. Yes. What color is your dog? <laughs> Damn it, I told you three times he's white. My dog is white. A white dog. <laughs> Where did you last see your dog? I told you, you asshole. Uh, I let him out of the bag to pee. He went into the bush and he didn't come out. We have a large search party looking for your dog as we speak. I'm standing there going, you lying bastard. How the hell you, you just found out the dog was missing. You ain't got no search party, but he cool handling her ass. You listen to me, you black bastard. Now the African, once you say that, they get real smooth. Oh, that type of language is not necessary. <laughs> he reached in the drawer. Let me allow you to read paragraph two, where it clearly states, 
Please do not bring any household pets as we have all the wildlife you need for your enjoyment. I don't want to read your paper. What happened to my dog? I done had enough, so I stepped in and said, how can I help you, man? You can get out there and find my dog. I said, I ain't the dog, man. You got the wrong brother now. She said, what is I want to find my dog? I said, listen to me. Let me help you. I picked bag up and zipped it up. I said, listen here. Take bag on back of your room. Your dog gone. <laughs> Ain't no more damn dog. Listen, I heard the story. You let the dog out to pee, it went in the bushes. Did you hear a sound like this here? <laughs> Did you hear like a teeth sucking sound or like <laughs> someone picking the teeth? How do you know? Well, that's what we do after we get through eating. We pick and we suck our teeth. Your damn dog is gone. Thank you very much. My wife came up to me and said, you said something to her? Hey, listen, you told me it wasn't my business. I told you it better not be. I came up here, now it's my damn business. We got to pay for this house and shit. Somebody got to write these jokes. <laughs> so the next morning, I'm going to play golf in Africa. I want to see what that's like. So they give me a tea time early in the morning so I get it, up, get it out of the way. Tea time is 6.45. They take me down, they give me my own golf cart, they put my car, clubs on the back of it, they put us in this lodge, and I gotta tell you, this thing was baller. We got in there, boy, it was really for a king. Them, them brothers treated me so good, I said, man, this is the nicest thing I've ever seen. So the next morning, he say, what you do? is you get on your golf cart, you go out of the driveway to the gate, at the bottom of the hill you make a left, and you go up the hill for one mile, and there is the Zimbali golf course, you have a great day, hit them straight. <laughs> I say, my man, cool, I'm playing golf in Africa. So I'm supposed to meet Tommy up there. So I'm up all night, I can't hardly sleep, cause this big, I'm going to play golf. I'm up at four o'clock. My girl's sleep, I'm looking out when I'm just sitting around, just messing around in the house. So we get around 5, 5.30, 6.30, I'm going to go get on the golf cart. I go get on the golf cart, and I'm sitting there. And I start it up, and I don't know if you've ever been on a golf cart, but you know, golf cart ain't got but one speed. And you can mash it hard as you want to. It's one speed. You can stand up if you want to. It's just one speed. So I get on the golf cart, I start it up, I hit the garage door open, it open, and I get on my golf cart and I hit the gas. And I slam on the brakes and I'm looking. I'll be down. It's still dark. I can't do this. I can't go back out here. I can't go back out here, the monkeys. I'm traumatized. I don't want to play golf in Africa no more. I, I don't even know why I'm up. But it ain't as dark as it was, so you can see just a little bit, because it's about, sun is about to come up, but it's really dark. But I said, okay, it ain't that dark. I can barely see. I'm going to go ahead on. <laughs> so I get to the bottom of the hill, I make the left, and I'm starting up the hill in this slow-ass golf car. <laughs> and I'm driving, and, I'm, and I look ahead. And I see something. But I keep going because I ain't sure. And I get a little closer. And uh oh. I see some monkeys. But it's a bunch of them. And on each side of the road was these two monkey troops. It was about 40 monkeys on each side. And they ass was up there arguing. I mean, they was having a full-blown argument. Look, I'm from the projects. I know an argument when I see one. Them damn monkeys was attacking. They wasn't at it yet, but they were, woo, 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 And I said, oh, this is crazy. Step on it and blow through these monkeys. I said, God, you have got to give me more gas than this. This ain't going to be good. Now the monkeys is closing in. So I said, oh, I ain't going to make it. So I throw it in reverse. I'm going to back up. But it's too late. The monkeys done got behind me. Oh, shit. 
man, I'm finna cry. And then all of a sudden, this monkey, they, a monkey ran across my lap. I mean, just woo. I ain't ready. So, he did it so fast that it scared me. So, I peed on myself a little bit. Skeet. And so I, I said, oh Lord, this can't be happening to me. I can't just pee on myself. This, I'm a grown ass man. This is, and then another monkey jumped up on the top of the golf cart and took his tail and stuck it in my ear like that. I went, Wah! So it scared me some more. So I peed on myself some more. Skeet. Oh God, please don't let the monkey smell the pee. Oh God, I'm pissing on myself. And I was going to say, oh God, please, uh, please don't let these monkeys smell this pee because then they're going to know I'm a bitch. I don't want the monkeys to know I'm a bitch. Please don't let the monkeys find out I'm a bitch. And then this monkey jumped up on the golf cart and took his hand and slapped my ass so hard. Pow! I'm soaking wet. Oh, Father. God, don't let these monkeys. Oh, they slapping the piss out of me. So I said, don't nobody slap Steve Harvey. So I grabbed the golf club and said, I'm going to kill one of the monkeys and make an example out of their ass. And that way they'll leave me alone. I took the club back and tried to pull it. A little monkey grabbed it. I said, you little punk ass monkey. And I jerked. He took that golf club and threw it in the bushes. I said, oh, shit. Skid. Skid. Oh, this monkey way too strong. Ski. God, kill the monkeys. Please kill the monkeys, God. Ski, ski. Then all of a sudden, one of the monkeys that was bigger than all the rest of the monkeys jumped out in the middle of the road and said, Arr! Everybody stop. Ski. <laughs> Big monkey hear the pee. Skeet. Oh God, I think he can hear it. Oh, go back, go back, big fella, go back, back in the hole, go back in the, go back. Please don't pee no more, please, please. Don't. So when it stopped, I said, "This is my chance to get away." So I stepped on the gas. That monkey said, "Ah!" So I stopped, and then I shit it on myself. Hey, Newark, New Jersey, thank you for coming. Thank you so much. <laughs>